It was a fitting memorial to the ninth Bishop of Newcastle, the Right Reverend Ian Shevel, who died in Brisbane earlier this month, age 70. Described as a man who did everything in a grand fashion, the Diocesan Eucharistian Memorial indeed did him proud. Clergy who were ordained by him assisted in the service, and the Right Reverend Geoffrey Parker, his auxiliary bishop while in Newcastle, gave the eulogy and homily. Bishop Shevel's first contact with Newcastle came as a boy of four when his father worked as an engineer here with BHP. Though he was Bishop of Newcastle for only four years, from 1973 to 77, it was a busy time of great achievement. He initiated the campaign to build the Cathedral Tower. He visited parishioners from Gosford to Scone by helicopter. He led a delegation of churchmen to the Soviet Union and Poland and witnessed a terrorist siege in Malaysia. Nicknamed the boy bishop because he was consecrated when only in his 30s, he remarried during his days in Newcastle and had two sons. He retired to Queensland after suffering a severe stroke. He is the author of some 20 books and continued to write up until the time of his death. It was an apt first reading from the writings of John Donne which said, All mankind is one author and is one volume. When one man dies, one chapter is not torn out of the book but translated into a better language. The rare accolade is a means of saying thank you for a landmark that's fast becoming a meeting place for the city. Ten years in the planning, the Newcastle Foreshore project finally came to fruition in Australia's bicentennial year. In making the award, club the president case, Paul Clarkson said the southern shore of the port was the birthplace of Newcastle, right but for years the site had languished in insignificance. It was an area ripe for redevelopment. And some far-sighted people in the Newcastle City Council, ten years ago, accepted the challenge to make the area a wonderful place to be. Had One of path, those people, former Lord Sweden, Mayor Joy so Cummings, looked on today as Lord Mayor John McNaughton accepted the award, pointing out that countless people, including the administrator and the previous council, could take credit for the successful completion of the project. The award takes the form of a reproduction of the painting The Summer House, which hangs in the Regent Art Gallery. still be in doubt as to who we are giving the award to. In Newcastle, there was also little inconvenience to the public today. In fact, commuters seem to come out on top, taking full advantage of the stand taken by bus drivers. Although not joining the 24-hour strike over the proposed transport bill, bus drivers made clear their opposition to the legislation by not collecting fares throughout the day. According to a spokesman from the Hamilton Depot, the number of bus passengers in the city area increased by 50%, all eager for a free ride, courtesy of the state government. Meanwhile, the rail union's decision to strike affected about 200 services to and from Newcastle, but most commuters in the area had been alerted to the strike and had made alternative travel arrangements. Despite the wide publicity surrounding the 24-hour train strike, some country passengers were still caught unaware. Last night, the Sydney to Brisbane train was terminated at Broadmeadow and all 486 passengers were bundled into coaches and transported by road to their destination. Sleepy passengers were told of the change minutes before arriving at the station. Despite being 80 minutes behind schedule when the journey began last night, those same passengers arrived 45 minutes early in Brisbane. Once a ship's cargo is unloaded in Sydney, it can sit in a warehouse for up to four weeks before distribution takes place. During the festive season, this bottleneck can cause costly delays, especially if vendors hope to sell the goods in the rush of Christmas shopping. A new service claims to have come up with a solution, using Newcastle as the unpacking point. Goods are freighted by road from Sydney to Newcastle and distributed at a waterside warehouse. 
It's a process that takes about 12 days, much faster than the Sydney alternative. While most of the goods terminate in Newcastle, some are sent back to Sydney, and a time saving is still achieved with distribution. The companies involved are East Coast Stevedoring and Marine Proprietary Limited, R&H Transport and CF Ocean Services. According to area manager John Raper, the enterprise has great potential for the port of Newcastle. What really is needed uh, is the help of the people around the Hunter Valley uh, development, uh, the businessmen themselves. We've planted the seed up here, we've spent a lot of time up here CF Ocean Service and we're only hoping for the support of all the business people um, in this area. Probably the most determined stance for a better deal has come from the RMOs of Newcastle. 77% of them have already handed in their resignations to local representative Dr Frank Simonson and he says those resignations will join the state pile tomorrow. We've had an overwhelming response from Newcastle. Uh, people have been committed enough to hand in their resignations to me and uh, provided they continue to they continue to believe that uh, Mr Collins is not prepared to discuss the issues and those resignations will be tendered to the Area Health Board probably tomorrow. Five Newcastle public hospitals will be affected by the resignations if they go ahead, they being Royal Newcastle, Belmont, the Martyr, Rankin Park and Walls End. It will involve close to 100 local RMOs, many who believe their resignations will virtually cripple local medical services. Their cause has attracted the sympathy of Dr Owen James, CEO of the Hunter Area Health Board, but he has questioned the doctor's choice of action. They do work long, arduous hours. Um, remuneration even now is not really good, but uh, they are trainees and uh, throughout the world. These are the sorts of conditions which uh, those who've graduated university uh, begin to learn their craft and trade. Just what will happen to the old Belmont Colliery site has been the subject of much public debate over the years. Several ideas have been put forward for the land, the combination of ridges, virgin bush, quarries and Chitterfield revegetation, bounded on the north by Valentine, east by Belmont and with water frontages to the south and west. Earlier ideas of marinas and a shopping centre and development on the high ground have been dropped this time. In return, the developers want to convert half of it into housing blocks with medium density units set back from the waterfront. The shore itself would be reserved for a depth of 30 to 40 metres. And they offer to spend a million dollars on playing fields and parkland to accompany the 800 building blocks and 250 units. And a further $20 million would be spent on infrastructure like roads and services. The developers concede that their scheme would use up 8% more of the land for housing than the currently displayed plan, but argue that 50-50 development is necessary to make the project economically viable. All the land is privately owned in three separate parcels and presently zoned Rural 1A, well, a common arrangement for holding land for future housing. The developers are seeking a change to 2A or 2B to accommodate domestic residences. According to spokesman Gordon Turnbull, the project manager, the only alternative would be for the land to stay as it is. It can be done by private enterprise with cooperation of all those parties concerned and that's what we're hoping to achieve. We're not looking to confront those who are against it, we just hope they'll sit down with us and look at the practical economics. If they oppose this and beat us, they don't win. They lose the chance of 250 acres of parkland. With an intelligent approach, which we have had from council and with old parties involved, we can do something very attractive for this area, offer a pleasant living area, and still offer an excellent park with all the foreshores protected, no boating or mariner developments. The original schoolhouse has stood in the grounds for the past 101 years. The timber building has not been used by students for some time and according to the education department, its rundown condition poses a threat. The Department of Public Works plans to demolish it so that the playground can be extended. But a group of Swansea residents want to see it preserved. 
They argue the building is of historic significance to the area and that the department is being short-sighted in destroying it. Lord Mayor Ivan Welsh has gone one step further, accusing the department of using backdoor thuggery. He says he obtained a written assurance from Education Minister Terry Metherill that no action would be taken. He's since learnt of the Department of Public Works plan to knock it down over the school holidays. Mr Welsh said from Parliament today that he was jumping up and down and screaming blue murder and that a vigil would be mounted to prevent bulldozers from levelling the site. He's also considering seeking heritage listing, which would at least back up his claim that the building is of historic value and not, as the department claims, just a heap of old rubbish. The photographic profiles of eight Hunter Valley residents are accompanied by poems and a collection of artefacts which reflect some aspect of their lives. The people are from varying backgrounds and locations in the valley and are shown during their daily cycle, at work, at home and at play. Their occupations range from grazier to minor and student. The exhibition has already received international acclaim. It was shown earlier this year in Paris at the Australian Embassy and later at our sister city in Newcastle-upon-Tyne. Despite its artistic value, photographer Alan Shawner says the exhibition was compiled as a cultural exchange. The end product is an appealing slice of Hunter Valley life. Well, cultural exchange in that. Um, people in, in France have no idea how we live and the ordinary things that we do and have around us are very unordinary in France. The exhibition can be seen at the Regional Museum during the next three months, a chance to observe at close quarters some of the ordinary people who help make the hunter what it is today. You know, the minister told a Rotary Business Luncheon that the federal government has set an agenda for restructuring industry awards so and developing a more skilled that, workforce. He again. said Newcastle's previous so, industrial record was on, not a factor in the frigate decision, so but the city would have to successfully restructure the, if it was to achieve the, the best price. The frigate contract will be decided on price, and that will depend largely on the efficiency with which the vessels can be built. For Newcastle, the clear message is not that we deserve the project. It is that the locally based consortium has to put forward the best priced bid. This was the first Newcastle business gathering Mr. Morris has addressed William since assuming his new portfolio, the and the gathering the was prepared to take it as a good omen. Work. The audience the agreed the, the minister's the message was encouraging. I, I think uh, uh, it's good. I think we've got a very, very good chance of picking it up. He showed a refreshing attitude that we should break uh, old traditions, old uh, views that uh, I think inhibit us. Well Newcastle's a fairly old place so it would be understandable if Newcastle is set in some old ways and traditions uh, but the Minister was giving us a clear message today that uh, some of those traditions and ways need to change for Newcastle to survive and continue to grow. From now on, the weekday tippers will face a $1 ticket for using the redhead and a wobber dumps. In the past, only weekend tipping incurred a fee. But council argues not many locals were taking advantage of the weekday offer, and instead people from other council areas were the major beneficiary. Lake Macquarie has now brought its fees into line with those other councils. The tipping charge was one of a number of service increases approved last night. The daily admission to swimming pools has risen by 20 cents to one dollar. While pensioners will not pay more, some seasonal passes will increase. Caravan and camping fees will also be affected. Fees for an unpowered site will increase by 20 cents, while a powered site will rise by 50 cents. Lake Macquarie Mayor Ivan Welsh claims most of the increases are simply keeping in line with inflation.
This is the second year Newcastle Police have banded together to provide Christmas gifts for the Salvos. Superintendent Russ Cook played an unlikely Santa when he officially presented the assortment of toys to Salvation Army Major Stan Tyndall on behalf of all policemen and women in the Newcastle district. The goodies will be packed away for transport to a depot. From there they'll go out on Christmas Day to hundreds of youngsters who would otherwise receive very little on this special day for children. Major Tyndall said family breakup and financial crisis could cast a shadow over the festive season, but thanks to the police gesture, the Christmas spirit would go just that little bit further. Daylight and parents, teachers and children saw the extent of the damage. Principal Bruce Dodds described their feelings. Very concerned, of course, and a few little children here this morning in tears because that was their classroom, you know, just a few weeks ago. And, uh, of course, from some concerned parents who have young people starting kinder and they know. Police say the fire started on the veranda. There's evidence that at least three fires were lit in piles of paper refuse. There were classrooms for up to 90 primary and kindergarten children, almost one third of the total school enrolment. Although the building was old, staff say it was in excellent condition. The fire didn't come as a surprise to staff who recalled previous attempts to destroy the rooms. One they set fire to uh, the mats near the door and not time they set fire to um, rubbish nut in the garbage bins. So, uh, this time they succeeded. Conservative estimates put the damage bill at about $30,000. The Public Works Department believes it can be repaired rather than replaced and luckily much of the contents will be salvaged. However, many children could start the new school year working in demountable buildings. A security guard has been posted at the site tonight to prevent further vandalism or pilfering. All major retailers are prospering in the festive season spending, with the shoppers stocking up for Christmas. David Jones in the city in Katara yesterday had record sales, 15% on last year's top. Charlestown Shopping Square reported a 10% increase, and Woolworths say it's the best Christmas in many seasons. With the traditional last minute rush for presents and foodstuffs, most stores have extended their shopping hours. Most of the major shopping centres are open till 9 tonight, and are open all day tomorrow. Closing for Christmas and Boxing Day, some will reopen Tuesday and the rest on Wednesday. Railway travellers between Newcastle and Sydney should note that timetables will be disrupted from tomorrow till January 10 due to work on the track. Railway officials say the Christmas period is the best time to work on the line as commuter traffic is down substantially. And on the roads, Northern Police have launched a new campaign, Operation Safe Arrival, to minimise road accidents. Police say drivers must be aware of fatigue and impatience when on the roads this Christmas. And being the festive season doesn't mean people can drink and drive. Peter Ryan reporting for NBN News. Jokes important for engineering reasons too. That we only have one instance. We don't want to have like one type checker implemented in Napier that we use in the compiler. The tasks is the standard frame did in PS Algo, except for it's very minimal. No matter what type we've got wrapped up inside the any, it's still of type any. It's a union type. So at some point we've got to do checking. We've got to be able to call the type checker runtime to be able to do this. Finally, the clause associated with the.